Antonia Anna Tony Wolf was a Swiss Union analyst and a close associate of Carl Jung. During her analytic career Tony Wolf published relatively little under her own name, but she helped Jung identify, define, and name some of his best-known concepts including anima, animus, and persona. Her best-known paper was an essay on four types, or aspects of the feminine psyche, the Amazon, the mother, the hetera, and the medial woman. Biography Wolf was born in 1888, the eldest of three daughters of a wealthy Zurich family. Encouraged by her parents to pursue creative interests, Wolf developed a passion for philosophy and mythology, as well as for astrology. However, when she asked to be allowed a university education, her father denied her request, explaining that it was not appropriate for a young woman of her class to have an official education. Wolf pursued her studies by enrolling in classes as a non-matriculating student. In December 1909, when she was 21, Wolf's father died and she became acutely depressed. She began analysis with Ewing, who was impressed by her intellect and treated her depression by stimulating and encouraging her to use it. Wolf became one of a Euro a long line of women who gravitated to Jung because he allowed them to use their intellectual interests and abilities in the service of analytical psychology Euro. She began to help him with research, and accompanied Carl and Emma Jung to a psychoanalytic conference in Weimar in 1911, Jung describing her as at that point as a Euro a remarkable intellect with excellent feeling for religion and philosophical or Euro. A not unwarranted sense of jealousy on Emma Jung's part meant that her research work with Jung had to be broken off, however, at the end of the year. Wolf's relationship with Jung was pivotal in her development as an analyst and member of the early analytic psychology circle in Zurich. She became an analyst and honorary president of the Zurich Psychological Club. By age 60, she had a busy practice, but was in poor health, suffering from both severe arthritis and her years of heavy smoking. She died suddenly and unexpectedly on March 21, 1953, aged 64. Relationship with Ewing Following Wolfe's analysis with Ewing, and her work as his assistant, she became his lover in 1913 when she was 25 years old. Apparently Ewing recorded in his diary that he decided to undertake the relationship with Wolfe after an impressive dream that occurred at the end of 1912. During the period of intense introspection from 1914-18 that followed Jung's break with Sigmund Freud, his encounter with the unconscious Wolf became a pivotal figure for the maintenance of his sanity. At that time she was a constant presence in the Jung household. It was she who listened to all Jung's visions, dreams, and fantasies, serving his every need from sounding board to devil's advocate, and who was his unacknowledged personal analyst. The intensity of Jung's relationship with Tony initially caused tensions in his marriage, but by the 1920s an accord of acceptance had evidently reached between Jung, his wife Emma, and Wolf. Jung's wife Emma accepted to share Carl with her in a Mar copyright nage a trua for that reason. Jung had been looking for the anima woman, eventually coming to call Tony his second wife. Wolf was a frequent visitor to the Jung house occasionally working on projects for Jung at his home office in the late mornings until the family lunch, and then continuing in the afternoon. She usually joined the family for Sunday dinners. From around 1920 until the end of her life, Jung was commonly accompanied by both Wolf and his wife at public and private functions. This arrangement satisfied what Jung had termed a euro or emi polygamous components a euro and fit into his lifelong habit of distributing his affections for safety among a number of his so-called Jungfrauen. However, the arrangement has been claimed by some interpreters to have been destructive to the self-esteem of both women. When in the early 1930s, Jung began to pursue alchemy as a parallel to the process of individuation. Wolf became concerned that Jung would be marginalized by this arcane focus of study. She invited a group of university students to visit Jung, including the brilliant and socially awkward 18-year-old Marie-Louise von Franz. In her 2003 biography of Jung, Deirdre Bear quotes von Franz as saying she intellectually replaced Tony Wolf in Jung's life. This can be confirmed from a documentary film in which von Franz said on camera, Her, Wolf's, big mistake was in not being enthusiastic about alchemy. It was unfortunate that she refused to follow him there, because otherwise he would not have thrown her over to collaborate with me. 
he would have used me just for translating, and he would have confided in her. But she wasn't interested. She was too much a slightly conventional Christian, and she refused to follow him. Yet despite this failing, throughout her life Wolf remained the companion of Jung's inner work. Aniela Jaffa Copyright, Jung's secretary and biographer, described her as Jung's helper in the intellectual penetration of the world of psychic images. In a memoir of Tony Wolf, Irene Champernone describes her this way. I always felt as if I were even nearer to Jung Euro unregistered trademark s inner wisdom when I was with her than when I was with him in the flesh. She was in some way the inner side of his or rather the inner companion of his journey through the unconscious. She had a remarkable insight and was articulate and confident. Jung acknowledged the importance of his relationship with Wolf. Even in later years of life, they frequently spent time together at Jung's Bollingen Tower. Until his health deteriorated after a heart attack in 1944, Wolf and Jung usually spent Wednesday evenings together at the home of Wolf. When Wolf died in 1953, Jung was overcome with grief, and found himself physically and emotionally unable to attend her funeral, fearing a public collapse. Jung's wife attended for them both. Jung had a memorial stone carved for her that read in Chinese characters arranged vertically Tony Wolf Lotus Nun Mysterious. Publications, Study in Zhu C. G. Jung's Psychology, Structural Forms of the Feminine Psyche. Zurich, C. G. Jung Institute 1956. See also. References. Sources, Whitney, Mark. Carl Jung A Euro Matter of Heart, 1 hour 45 m documentary in which Tony Wolfe is discussed and pictured. Champernone, Irene. A Memoir of Tony Wolfe. C. G. Jung Institute of San Francisco. Davis, D. A. Jung and the Psychoanalytic Movement. In P. Jung Isendroth and T. Dawson. Cambridge Companion to Jung. Cambridge University Press. Bibliography, Wolf, Tony. Structural Forms of the Feminine Psyche Zurich, C. G. Jung Institute. Champernone, Irene. A Memoir of Tony Wolf. San Francisco Jung Institute. Jensen, Fern. C. G. Jung, Emma Jung and Tony Wolfe, A Collection of Remembrances. Analytical Psychology Club. Kish, Thomas B. Tony Wolfe James Kish Correspondence. Journal of Analytical Psychology 48, PGS. 499 Euro 506. Neri, Nadia. 1995. Alter Lemra. Done in Torno a Young Baller, Roma. External links, a memoir of Tony Wolfe by Irene Champernone. Available for free download courtesy of the San Francisco Young Institute. Out of the Shadows, a story of Tony Wolfe and Emma Young, a series of audio lectures on Young and his relationship to Tony Wolfe.